Scott, welcome into the program. I want to start this morning by thanking your significant other, Mrs. Maria, for bestowing some uh, <laughs> tickets for my brother and I on Saturday. Well, that was actually supposed to be a surprise. And then, then we were listening to the radio this morning. <laughs> and I went, oh, I can't go. So I'm going to a, a dad's day with my daughter over at ASU, so I'll be gone tomorrow. And okay. I said, you need to call and let those tickets go back. I'm going to let Ty take those tickets. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, that, you're gonna have you're gonna have some fun in, in Jonesboro this weekend. What does Scott Tabor have planned with his daughter this weekend at a Dad's Day sorority? Well, this will be a first for me. I uh, I get to go watch a ASU spring game. I'd rather be watching a U of A spring game, but I'm going to be watching the <laughs> ASU spring game. Hey, but I'll be with my daughter, so it'll be a fantastic time. There you go. Uh-huh. There you go. So, all right, big weekend. Uh, you know, I was looking through, and a, an interesting note I was mentioning to the guys earlier is this will be the – there's been 86 meetings between A&M and Arkansas in the history of the two programs in baseball. Scott, this series is tied dead even at 43. I, I just find those things, which wow. mean nothing about this weekend, but I just find it amazing. Right. You played A&M many times in your days in the Southwest Conference. What – is there a memory? Is there a game? Is there a trip to college? State? Anything that stands out first before we get to this weekend from, well, from your playing days? Well, it's funny you'd ask. Some of my favorite games were against some of my favorite memories were against A&M. They were always highly rated, uh, always highly ranked. They were up there with Texas. Always had a lot of talent. And they had the first stadium I'd ever actually been into, the first baseball stadium I'd ever been into. It was a double-decker, and the, the field was was nicer than a golf course. I mean, they're an agri school. Uh, their their grass was cross cut, a ball coming out out the outfield to field it it zigzagged as we hit the cross cuts. I'd never seen anything like this, so everything there was was pretty cool. Even the uh, little yell leaders standing on top of your dugout giving you grief in their little white uh, snow their <laughs> snow cone salesman uniforms. You know everything was really new and cool, and always had great uh, great success against stay in them. Uh, I don't I don't know in particular why, but just always did fun place to play. Their fan base was was very knowledgeable back then, and and they. Uh, it was a fun place to play. couple of lefties going tonight. Arkansas starting Patrick Wicklander. A&M uh, has Dustin Sains going. Two lefties in tonight's game. We, we talk about this frequently, but Arkansas generally struggles at the plate against left-handed pitching, as do a lot of teams. This should be an interesting game tonight. Yeah, and it goes both ways. You know, A&M's going to see a, a good lefty in Wicklander. And every, like you said, every team, that's why lefties are such a great commodity. And, you know, I was thinking about it. We're the number one team in the country. And generally, when you think of the number one team in the country, you think of somebody that that dominates something. They're starting pitching. they got three starters that we're not going to touch, you know. So, or, or they've got nine guys that just pound the ball and they're scoring 15 runs a game, you know, kind of like this, this week, midweek stuff, but, you know, on a regular basis. We're not that team. It doesn't feel like a number one team in the nation to me looking from the outside in, you know, you watch the games and gosh, it'll be sixth inning. It'll be one to one or, or, you know, two to two. And then we bust it open or we have a way to go, have a way to come back mm-hmm. and win, uh, which is, which is the sign of a championship team, not yeah. necessarily a consensus number one team in the nation. Uh, back in remember back in the day, our Arizona state was always highly ranked because they would score 10, 15 runs a game. And it was legit. They have some yeah. hitters just had tons of hitters. So A and M probably not going to be intimidated coming in. You know, yeah. they're I think they're better than the record, uh, and they've got a lot of talent. And, and you never know who's going to show up. You know, a left-handed pitcher gets on the mound, he gets hot, and, and everything he throws goes where he wants it. And, uh, it's tough to beat them. To to your point, Arkansas has struggled. Other than the Sunday game last weekend, Arkansas has struggled with starting pitching. Now, last weekend they got hot early on that Sunday, but uh, in SEC play. They have not been able to get on track the first time through the lineup, sometimes into the fourth or fifth inning. What do you attribute that to? Right. Well, the, the fact that if you're an SEC starter, you're a talented, talented kid. You've got a great arm. You've got great velocity. Uh, the kids that are really, really excel are the, are the guys who can – they have great velocity, but they also can really pitch. And so it just, just write it down. If you're an SEC starter, you're going to be a good pitcher. So the other team has to figure it out. And sometimes it's – I think that's what Arkansas does as good as anybody I've ever seen. The second and third time through the lineup, you know, they figure it out. They they they've seen what they've got. They've seen their stuff, uh, and some and and they just find a way to figure it out. And that's a that's a sign of a championship caliber team. 
this is the point of the year where it just kind of seems like uh, there'll be some teams that mellow out and there'll be some teams that have surged. And <clears throat> Arkansas has been just red hot for the first half of the season. A&M has not. Scott, do you do? Is there concern with where the season is that you know that that it's tough to maintain the momentum? You know, Clay, I think that kind of comes back to what we talked about. It doesn't feel like we've really even hit our stride. We're still trying to figure out one of the big questions at the beginning of the year is what's our starting rotation going to be? Who's going to be our Friday night lockdown guy? It, it, we thought it may be Wicklander before Wicklander, you know, struggled. But then, and so you just don't know. That's kind of being a, been a revolving door. The luxury that we have is such a deep bullpen. You know, we've come to find out that Kevin Copps is the most valuable pitcher on the team. Any time that they put him in the game, he's just been nails. Whether it's been in short relief to finish a game or just to stop the bleeding and go, you know, say, let's see how long he goes. And he can go five innings and finish a game. And so he's the guy that's keeping us in a lot of games. Uh, if they, eventually that can catch up with you in a long season. You know, we're at the point of the season, like you said, that people mellow out. A lot of it is, is your pitching staff starts getting some, some sore arms a little bit here and there for overuse or for, uh, bad weather or for just pitching in general. Uh, some of your hitters, hitters are starting to catch up with pitching a lot. I think you see that around the country. Uh, your pitchers always start off ahead, hitters catch up. And so this is the part where some teams will start surging. Uh, some teams start falling back. And I think Arkansas, I don't, I don't think there's going to be a surge or a mellow out. I think the, the, the key to this team is the consistency that they've been showing. Whether it's consistently happened to come from behind, that's not a good consistent to have to have because it's eventually it catches up with you. Uh, but I think the I think our, our staff is in good shape as far as you haven't heard of any arm injuries or somebody having to miss a start or uh, can't come out of the pen. Uh, you know, it's I think it's I think it's a good run. Yeah, I know that Texas A&M had a key player miss some time because of COVID, and, and COVID hasn't really right. raised its head at Arkansas this spring, and it may not. I think that the, the players have been vaccinated. The the you know what what I wonder is is will uh, you know can you have you settled into a lineup because it seems like you know through the last month we've seen a lot of different combinations and maybe that's good. I don't know. What what do you think about? The versatility of this team, Scott. Well, it goes back to the depth that Van Horn has developed. Uh, you've had, uh, I guess, Gregory had a hamstring pull. Well, you know, you got another guy that's going to step back in and do as well or better than Gregory. You know, and and getting different kids hot at the plate at different times. You know, Caden Wallace uh, is a fantastic, fantastic hitter, but but I don't think he's hit one of those streaks where. Ten games in a row, he's ripping the cover off of it. Sometimes he's it's, it's kind of feast or family with him, but he's a freshman, you know. And by the time you get to the second half of the season, your freshmen really aren't freshmen anymore. They've uh, they've been through it enough to where they have a routine and, and they're not their eyes aren't as big as they were at the beginning of the season. Uh, I think it's it's one of the strengths of this team, kind of like our basketball team, the depth. You keep running them in, and you're not losing anything by putting the next guy in. It's kind of the next man up mentality, and that's a that's the key in a long season. If you've only got nine guys or a short pitching staff, you get to the end of the season, and then you get into postseason play, and that's where you see some teams fall back. So if they can maintain their, their consistency, uh, you know, you'd love to see your starters at least go five innings. I, I'm, I'm a big believer in that because then, then you've got a plethora of guys that can come in, throw an inning, inning and a half, come in for an out. You can spot your guys in there and never wear anybody out. So we'll see how it, how it pans out. I think Wicklander's kind of coming into his own. Uh, you know, and the starters have to know they've got to go in and do the job. They can't start walking guys. They start walking guys. There's a short leash. It'd be yeah. I don't know that I would enjoy pitching for this staff yeah. with the short leashes they had. You, you didn't know yeah, what a five inning outing was in your career. No. I mean. Hey, that's called the five and die. That's the guy who goes five innings and hit by two runs. And goes, My back hurts a little bit. Yeah. Come out and get win. So that was a that was always a big joke. Yeah. Scott, enjoy your time with your daughter this weekend. Jonesboro, man, we'll do it next week. And, uh, I'll certainly do it. Keep on going. All right. Enjoy the game, Ty. Enjoy the game. Right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> he Bye. owes you one. <laughs> Scott, Scott, Tabor right, with, Scott, Thanks, Scott Tabor with us here on the Morning Rush.